good good morning everybody so today i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna talk i'm gonna discuss climate climate change so if if you want to understand uh, climate change and climate you you need first of all to to understand weather so what is so what is the weather so let's have a look so weather it's a sort of instantaneous or current state of the atmosphere so it's very it's it's very var variable. So what what I'm showing here, uh, the the figure is a weather sa satellite map for the 27th of September 2010 at 2 p.m. in the after in the afternoon. And what you see in white is clouds. So what you see is very variable, especially. And this type of weather weather. Okay, yeah. So here you've got clouds. Okay. So it means that here you've got a lot of clouds, and next to it you've got you, you've got no clouds, and it's clear, 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 clear sky. So it means that, in respect to space, it's very, very viable. And this type of satellite map is used to test uh, model uh, forecasting, forecasting the the weather. So when you want, when we talk about weather, it's, you it's characterized by the, a range of what we call atmospheric parameters. It's parameters that you are well aware. It's the temperature, okay? The pressure, which we don't feel, but we feel the temperature. You've got the humidity, wind speed, cloudiness, the cloud, and pr precipitation. And pr precipitation is typically the, the rain. So it's very, very variable. And you've got another map showing, showing another, uh, another uh, parameter of the of the of the weather it's precipitation so it's a precipitation satellite map during a specific day here at the second of june 2010 over over 2017 over, over over europe and what is being shown is where when it's we've got very colorful areas like this one you've got very very high precipitation uh, very high ra rainfalls okay so it's again it's this kind of satellite data is used to test uh, models forecasting for, for forecasting the, the weather. So it means that weather, it's temperature, precipitation, wind, a lot of atmospheric parameters. So what is what is climate? And that's, because the weather is very 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 variable, climate is a, is the weather the average over long time periods. So usually it's over years, decades centuries or greater. So it means from 10 years to thousands, thousands or hundreds of thousand years, okay? And the climate, it gives the pre prevailing weather, weather condition over, of an area. So it means it's the same atmospheric parameters as the as a, as a weather, and typically it's temperature, precipitation, but on the top, you've got sea levels, etc. You've got a range of pa pa parameters. So what I'm what I'm showing here it's a, it's a map of the hair temperature at the at the, at the surface, and it's a, it's an average over the 1959-1997 period, and what you see in red is when the temperature is very high is here, and when it's dark red is uh, it's between uh, 25 and 30 30 degrees 30 degrees Celsius, so it's a tropical uh, tropical climate. And in blue, it's when it's cold. So here, it's very cold. Okay, it's below. It's below. It's below zero. Okay, so red area correspond to warm climate, and blue area correspond to cold climate. And it's for it's for January. I could have shown also uh, 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 July and August, and it means it would have been much warmer here in the Arctic, and much colder in the Antarctic. Okay, and since the map, I, I should have mentioned Africa. You've got North America, South America, Europe, here in the middle, Asia, and here it's Australia, okay? So the important point is climate is simply the average, the average weather. And, and why is it important, climate? It's in, in, in fact, climate controls ve vegetation. It controls rainfall, temperature, etc. So it controls vegetation, plants, in, and it's very important for 
the, the agriculture and the develop, development of life, life on Earth. So typically, there are very few people in the desert because there's no, very little rainfall, no rainfall, and there's very few people in, in Antarctica because it's very cold. In the Arctic, you've got few people, Inuits, etc., but uh, the population density is very low. And most people are, are in, in, in temperate, uh, temperate climate. Here, you've got, uh, it's mean, it means in the, in the northern, uh, northern hemisphere at mid, mid, mid latitudes, okay? It's the same here. Most population are here. It's the same in, uh, in, the, in the south, that mid, mid, mid latitudes that you've got most, mo most of the people because you've got temp temperate, uh, temperate climate. It's not too cold, it's not too warm. There's a good level of, uh, of pre precipitation, so it's very good for, for the, for the ag agriculture. So why is it warm in the tropics and cold at the poles? What determines, what determines climate? And if you, if you want to understand climate and why is it cold and warm, you, you should see the climate as a sort of a thermal machine. It's an in energy balance. And I'm going to start. I'm not sure that it's going to work, but we'll see. No, it doesn't work. It's, I was supposed to have an, uh, an... But here, it's simply the fact that if it was working, you would have here uh, the sun radiation coming here, okay? And the, f the fact that on, uh, in the tropics, at the equator, you've got, you've got the, the solar radiation arriving on a flat surface here, okay? The only problem is that high latitude in the polar region, you've got the same energy, but distributed with an angle, okay? So you've got per what we call the by what we call surface uh, unit surface area, you've got you've got uh, lit, lit, little energy here compared compared to here. So it explains why here you've got uh, very high, what we call high zenith angle. It means that the sun is arriving on the surface, but with a with a with a very uh, it's sort of uh, just tangential to the to the surface. So you've got little little solar solar energy, little heating. Well, here in the tropics, you've got uh, you've got a lot of uh, solar uh, energy arriving arriving at the at the surface. So it explains why it's warm here, and it's cold here. So carry on. So, so you, know, you must have heard in the news, etc., a lot of uh, uh, talks and uh, in the media about uh, climate change. So the first question you, you have to ask uh, is the climate changing? So here I'm plotting the temperature history in in Paris, okay? And it's from it's from it's it's uh, from about uh, beginning beginning of the last uh, century, about 1900 till till uh, till till nowadays, okay? So you, and it's, uh, it's what we call its annual mean, so it's temperature average of of a one one year. And w what you see is that when it's red, it's sort of higher, high, high, higher temperature with respect to the to the mean over 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 this uh, over the last century, and in blue it's when it's colder with respect to the mean of the last century. And and what you see is that in the last in the last I would say uh, 50 years there have been an increase in in Paris. And if you if you calculate over the mean, it, it has been an increase of about one degree one degree Celsius in the last century. Okay, so the, one one of the question is is this just in Paris? Is it, is it significant? And if you have a look at all the temperature records of, over the northern hemisphere since 1850, and why why is it? Since 1850, because there have been people measuring top, top temperature in England, in Germany, in France. So we've got uh, with, with it's measured with thermometer, 
and we've got we've got the, the data. And what you see when you average over uh, over the northern hemisphere uh, temperature record since uh, 1850, what you see is that in the in the last again in the last 50 years, I would say there have been a sort of increase in in, top, in top temperature. And if you consider the last three decades, they have been warmer than, than the previous ones since the beginning of meteorological measurements. So there have been this, there have been this st steady increase in temperature, okay? And if you consider the 1983 to 2012 period, it was the hottest in the last 140 years. So it means it's not just in Paris, it's almost everywhere in the northern in the north, northern hemisphere the climate has been has been warming so now the question is is it the earth's uh, surface warming everywhere in the world not only in the northern hemisphere and continuously so what i'm i'm showing here on the left hand side this this figure is the temperature change from 19 uh, 01 to 2012, essentially from, from, from the beginning of the last century. And keep in mind, so in red, you've got warmer temperature, so it goes from zero to plus two degrees here. And when it's blue, it's colder, and it goes for till about half, half, half a degree. So the first thing that you, that you can notice is that most of the earth's surface has been has been has, has been warming okay it's almost everywhere and some area has been warming faster typically here in in asia or in the in the arctic but also there have been areas small areas that has been cooling here okay so it means that uh when we say that it's a global warming it's not warming everywhere okay but globally when you average on a global scale it's warming, okay? And if you have a look at, this is the, the temperature anomalies, again in England, month by month, the variation, what you can see, it's very, very variable, okay? It varies from a month to month. You've got sometimes, one month is very cold, another one, it's, it's, uh, it's warm. What you need to have a look is the average, temporary average. And what you see even in England, there is an increase in the temperature, like that, okay? The temperature is increasing on average, so it's very important to average spatially and temporarily to to study to study climate. Very important. And it's not only the temperature which is which is changing. Here is the change in sea level. Okay, and this from the from the period from 1993 to 2012. So why from 1993 to 2012? I'm, I'm not being selective here. It's the fact, it's the fact that we've got very accurate satellite m measurements. Satellites are, v are very important nowadays for Earth observation and, and climate, climate change uh, research because they provide very accurate global, glo global, global m m measurements. So what, what you are see, seeing here in this, uh, on this figure is a variation in sea level, in millimeters. It's very accurate. We can detect uh, sea level change in millimeters, okay? It's very, very accurate. So in red is when you've got an increase, and in blue is when you've got a decrease. So what you see, again, spatially, it's very va variable, okay? What you can see is most, most of the surface is in uh, red and yellow. So it means that globally it's, it's increasing. But you've got some areas in blue here which we, when, where the sea level is decreasing, okay? Very variable, but generally increasing in sea level. And when you do calculate the global average, so you've got a much clearer picture, okay? And w this is a change in, uh, in sea level from, from uh, 1900, so it means beginning of the last century till nowadays. And it's very continuous increase in uh, in a, in a, in sea level, and it and it went up by by about 10, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20 centimeters. Okay, so the sea level has been increasing by 20, 20, 20, 20 centimeters, 
as you see, Chris is a big change with respect to sea levels, which which, which had been globally stable in, in the previous in the previous century. In the previous 3,000 years, sea level had n had no change globally. So here is what what we see is that in the last century, sea, le sea level has been increasing. And if you have a look again in the change or in precipitations, so it's essentially rainfall, okay? And it's the change from 1951 to 2010. What you see is that, so it's very uh, heterogeneous, especially. What, what does it mean is that it's difficult to, uh, to see a global, a global picture. It's difficult to claim that there is a, an increase or decrease in precipitation globally. But what you see is that where area were dry, okay? So in, bra in a sort of brown here, it means that uh, the rainfall has been decreasing, okay? And in blue, it means that rainfall has been increasing. And, and this is interesting because over very dry areas, the pre precipitation has been, has been decreasing. So it means that dry areas are becoming drier. It's here or here, okay? And what is interesting is in wet areas, here, here, where, where it has been very wet already, it's getting uh, wetter. So it, so it simply means that in terms of cli climate change, there is no global increase or decrease in, in precipitation. All we can see is that the areas that are dry will be, are becoming drier, and wet areas are becoming wetter. Okay, more more rainfalls in uh, over over the mid mid latitudes, and less rainfall over 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 the deserts, essentially. And so, in in conclusion, since the 1950s, there have been many evi evi uh, indices evidence and mostly observations, huh, okay, of climate change. I, I, I've, shown you, I've shown you just, just a, few, a few examples. And some are unprecedented over the last few millennia. What, 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 does, what does it mean is that in the last 50 years, we are seeing changes where, that we haven't seen in the last 2,000 years, okay? This is evolution temperature in the last, uh, the last century. You've got this, uh, this warming, but it's not only warming, in, uh, it's not only uh, temperature, it's precipitation, big changes. Glaciers, for example, here. Most of the glaciers are retreating nowadays. Okay, so it means that uh, if, if you see pictures of glaciers, almost everywhere in, in the world, they are, they are getting smaller. It simply means that the temperature is increasing, the ice is melting. Okay, so you've got less glaciers, less snow, less, uh, snow, snow covers, air temperature is, uh, is, uh, is increasing. So it's a lot of signs and uh, observation showing that the climate is changing quickly. So I'm, I'm, and it's a global phenomenon. It's not uh, limited to a specific area, it's everywhere. Here is the global annual mean change in, in, in temperature. So, and this is, so you take the temperature for one year and you calculate the average and you see this increase. And what you can do, you can do the same, the average over 10 years. So this is what I'm showing here. And so the, and once you have it, it's even a clearer picture because what you can see is that in the last 40 years, 50 years, the temperature every decade when you average over, over a decade, over 10 years, has been increasing, okay? And it's the same for, so this is the Arctic, okay? And what, what, we, have, what we have been observing in the last, uh, I would say, uh, uh, 50 years, again, it's a, it's a very rapid decrease, is what we call the extent of the Arctic sea ice here, okay? It was relatively stable, and in the last 50 years, in the last uh, 30 years, has been dropping here dramatically. So this is 
before in the in the 40s 50s here and this is the extent of the of the sea ice nowadays it's it's a really massive drop huh? and it means that it has implication for for the for the for the climate in the area for biological systems in uh, in the ocean etc and for climate and here i'm plotting is the change in the global average what we call heat content it means that even the, the temperature in the ocean is changing and it's also rising okay and here it's a change in sea level i'd, I'd shown you already in the last century it's more it's 20 uh, 20 centimeters higher so it means that all the indicators that we know are all showing the same thing it's it's uh, climate change is happening and it's a global it's a global phenomenon and again this is temperature history for the northern hemisphere so we've got a lot of data in the northern hemisphere okay because you've got a, a lot a lot of people and there have been a, a, a lot, lot of studies in the northern hemisphere and you can so you've got here the research when we've got we've got uh, air temperature me measurements directly but we can also reconstruct we can derive the, the temperature from a, from what we call climate pro proxies so you can, here you've got the historical archives but you can have a look at tree rings and we can go back in time you, you have a look at very old trees okay and we and depending on the on the type and the the uh, space between tree ring you, you can derive the temperature we can have a look at cor corals stalagmites it means in caves and we can derive the, t the temperature variation in the last 2000 years so and what you see is that i would say it has been pretty uh, pretty stable there have been variations huh? you see right here you had what we call the medieval optimum it has been a bit warmer in a 1000 years ago here it, it has been a bit colder uh, for, for 400 years ago and we know why it's the solar it's a solar vi vi viability but what we are seeing nowadays in changes are unprecedented because massive rise now in temperature it's very quick huh? it's very quick So climate is changing. So what is what is the origin? And the origin it's simply atmospheric chemical composition changes. And I'm going to show you what what I mean by chemical composition changes. Uh, one of the great advances, one of the great discovery, I would say, for climate sciences is 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 the use of ice cores. Ice cores. So this is uh, the Antarctic continent. But it's the same. It's the same for 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 Greenland. They are covered. They are covered with very thick ice. And when I say thick, it's in a, in Antarctica, for example, it it could be a, a kilometer thick. So you are talking of very thick ice, and it has, it means that you've got snowfalls and complete freezing, and you've got layers after layers after layers of uh, of, uh, of of ice. And as you go deep in the ice, you can go back in time. You can see what, what, what was happening 100 years or 1,000 years ago. And, and why is that? So what, what they do is that they dig uh, holes and, and extract what we call carrots. It's just a sort of uh, a tube, tube of ice. And they can go down, they can, they can, go, they can go back in time, OK? And what is interesting is that what we call the isotopic composition of the ice is like a, a thermometer. You can derive the temperature, but what is very interesting is that in the eye, in the ice, you've got bubble straps, and these bubbles here, it's is 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 the, uh, the air of the atmosphere a uh, thousand years ago or fifty thousand years ago. Okay. Because at at its free, when it, when it freezes, it traps it traps bubbles, air bubbles, 
and you and we can analyze this uh, co the chemical composition of this of these bubbles so we can analyze the chemical composition of the atmosphere 10,000 years ago 50,000 years ago okay so ice gives you the temperature and bubbles gives you the atmospheric composition and if you do that Let's consider the ice. This is the Antarctic temperature history in the last 800,000 years. So this is temperature. So it goes from, uh, uh, it means that it varies over about here 10, 10, 10, 15, 10 15, uh, 15 degrees. And this is, and the horizontal axis is time. So here you are go going back in time. Huh? So you've got 200,000 years, 400,000, 600,000 years, and 800,000 years. Okay, and what you see is a succession of what we call glacial inter interglacial state. It means that in red here yeah, you had periods when it was really warm. The, uh, the Antarctic was was very warm, and periods where the Antarctic was very cold. And this is a succession of glacial interglacial uh, uh, periods. And we know why it's it's linked to the to the sun to the sun variability, and it's, and especially the position of the Earth and its acts of rotation with respect to the sun. So it's really it's what we call it's related to the solar 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 variability. Okay, so it's very variable. So it's it's another it's another picture when you put the temperature record as I've sh shown you. And you put it next to uh, the concentration of what we call greenhouse gases in in the air bubbles. Okay, so it's again it goes from uh, for, for the last 600,000 years, and this is here. It's CO2 concentration of CO2 uh, greenhouse gases, and the concentration of methane, another important greenhouse greenhouse gases. And what you see is that. When you've got very high temperature, you've got very high levels of CO2, a very high level of methane. So it means that there is a very strong correlation between the evolution of temperature and the concentration of greenhouse gases. Okay. And this is what has been happening: the variation of CO2 and methane, methane in the last uh, 800,000 years. So now. Oh, so sorry, I'm going back. And here, what I've plotted here is the concentration of CO2 and methane now nowadays. And I would like I would like you to to notice the change. In the last 800,000 years, methane uh, CO2 has been varying between 200 and roughly 300 300 what we call ppmv. It's a concentration. Nowadays, we've got 400. So it means that this level, the atmospheric concentration of CO2 has never been seen in the last uh, 600,000 years. And the same for methane. Methane has been varying between 400 and roughly six or 700 PPB, PPV, which is a uh, concentration unit. And nowadays, you've got 1,800 uh, PPBV. So it's unprecedented concentration levels. So it means that in the last, I would say, one, 100, 100 to 150 years, there has been a very rapid, rapid increase in the concentration of greenhouse gases, CO2, methane, and N2O. And it shouldn't be re recently, it should be recently. <laughs> in, French. in French. So it means, and if you, if you combine uh, the ice core measurements and the atmospheric measurements, you can see there is a good uh, good matching, and it means that CO2 has increased by 40 40 percent in the last 100 or 200 years. Methane methane concentration has tripled, okay, and N2 N2 has increased by 20 percent, okay. And they have reached levels that are unprecedented in more than 600,000 years. So, what is the cause? What is the origin of this uh, 
of this increase in uh, the concentration of greenhouse gases and its human activities and emissions associated linked to human activities, okay? And what I'm showing here is the uh, anthropic emission of CO2, okay, it's the level. It's in, it's in petagram of carbon per year, but it doesn't matter as a unit. Huh? But what, what you are saying is that before uh, 1,900, before, before, uh, before the last centuries, the anthropic human, human emissions have been, have been very low. But in the last 100 years now, you have been very, very rapid increase in the, in the emission of CO2. And it's linked essentially to uh, burning, burning fuel. Okay, essentially it's burning fuels, cars, factories, etc. At the same time, you, you have to notice that all this CO2 pumped up into the, into, into the atmosphere, emitted into, into, the, into the, the atmosphere, doesn't stay, doesn't stay there. A fraction of it is absorbed by oceans, okay? Oceans absorb about 30% of anthropogenic emissions, okay? And it's causing acidification of the, of, the, of the ocean, and it has an impact on, uh, on corals, okay? So now, conclusion, it now well established beyond that, that the climate is changing and that greenhouse gas concentration have reached record level and will continue to increase rapidly. There's no reason to change. We are, we are, still, we are still emitting a lot of CO2 in the, in the atmosphere. And these changes are unprecedented for more than half a million years in amplitude and especially in speed. It's very rapid if you consider, if you consider the previous, the past, the climate, climate, climate variations. So climate changing at exceptional speed, the origin is increase the question of greenhouse gas in the atmosphere, but there are other factors in climate, climate variability. I'm going to show you some. And there are other, what we call, they are not anthropogenic, they are natural, natural factors. And here I'm showing other, other what we call forcing. It's factors that act on climate, that, uh, that change, that, that, uh, ch that change the, the climate. And you've got volcanic eruption here. I mean, once you've got a very big eruption, okay, once you've got a very big eruption, you've got cooling at, at the surface, okay? You've got solar variation, because if, if you've got uh, less solar radiation, uh, less solar energy at the surface, you've got cooling. And this is human activity. Uh, human activities have had a big impact in the last, in the last century, okay? So this is natural, na natural factors leading to natural climate variability. And you've got here the anthropogenic factors, human activities. Okay. So, blah, blah, blah. So, how do we, so what do we do to, to study climate? We use observations. Okay, a lot of observations, aircraft, satellite, ground-based measurements. But we use what we call climate models. Okay. And essentially is what we put is what we know on the system equation different law of physics and chemistry, code, and we do, and we have supercomputers. So it's a bit like um, video, video games, programs for video games, instead of simulating uh, games, we are simulating the, the, the climate. And I'm gonna show you a movie. So this is your movie, explain you a bit what, what, what is a climate, uh, a climate, a climate, a climate model. Okay, so what you see is that uh, we've got the, the solar system, we've got the sun, and here is uh, the earth. We've, got the, we've just seen the, the moon. And what we do, well, we, we discretize uh, the system. It means we are decomposing the space in small cubes and piles of, of cubes, okay? And within each cube, what you have is, uh, so we do that for the atmosphere, but we do, uh, do it also for the, for, the, for the ocean. And in the cube, it's like a weather, a, a weather, a weather model. You describe clouds, you describe rainfall, it means the, the, water, the, the water cycle. We describe a lot of things. We can simulate 
the vegetation here, uh, rivers, it's, it's really cool. And what we see here is the evaporation of water, clouds forming, rainfall. So we have got, we've got that in our, in our, in our models. We, we can also include atmospheric chemistry, so emissions of uh, uh, greenhouse gases and uh, 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 ozone precursors, and, that. and we do the same thing in the ocean. We describe the currents, so in the atmosphere is wind, the temperature, but it's the same here, currents and, uh, currents and all the mixing processes. Uh, we've got the ocean temperature. We describe also what we call the plankton, and it becomes a big trap for, for carbon, so we, need, so we need to include it to be able to, to simulate carb, carbon levels in the atmosphere. And all these cubes after, we put them in, in computers, okay? So here's, here's a big, uh, big unit, different units. So it's, uh, it's super computers, huh? they are simply uh, uh, there for, for science. And from there, <coughs> we simulate the atmosphere chemical composition, temperature evolution, a range, a range of parameters, ocean, ocean parameters. Here, it's simply the sea, sea surface temp, 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 temperatures, and you've got, and you can see the currents. Here is the cloud, is the cloud cover, how the, how the, how the cloud, it's, it's a bit like a weather, a, a weather, a weather forecast model. Here, you've got, uh, yes, it's another it's another example example of uh, uh, sea surface temperatures. You've, you've got the wind. We uh, we can describe the wind. It's a bit like a like a meteorological model, but it's on long time scale. It's globally, and we can also simulate the evolution. Okay, we can in in uh, here. It's an example of the the temperature evolution. And we can also simulate the evolution of the, the vegetation. Okay, this is a seasonal variation in the, in the vegetation. You can see what, what was happening, you can simulate what was happening in the past and what will be happening in the future. And I'm going to show you another, 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 uh, another simulation. And here it's, it's a simulation of the evolution of the, of the air temperature at, at the surface. Okay, so on the left hand side, you would have, you would have air without hum human activities. And on the right hand side is when you take into account the emission of CO2 from human, 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 human activities. And models are used really to make projection, future, future, future projection, what will be happening at the, at the end of this, this century. So on the left hand side is no human activities, no emissions, and on the right hand side is with the future, the, with high levels of emissions, okay, in, in, during this century. And, and you can see the, the, the year indicated here. So what you see is you've got, you've got parts, part of it will be colder or warmer, et cetera, et cetera, okay? And, and what you see is that as, as you go, go in time, globally, I mean, in general, most of the areas will become warmer. And if you see this change, this is a high, okay, this is a uh, sort of uh, uh, high, high levels of emissions. But if you go at the, at the end, I'm going to block it. Oh, no, sorry. This is uh, toward, towards the end of the century. It simply means that the increase is going to be very high. If we do not do anything about uh, carbon emissions, you, got, you are talking of change, massive change. It's between four, four and five degrees, four and five degree, degree Celsius. It, do, it does not mean much for, for you, maybe. Say it's going to get warmer. But it means that here it's going to be, for example, it's going to be extremely dark. It's going to be a desert, this area, for, for instance. Okay, it will have massive impact on the desert. Here, Arctic ice will have, will, in the summer, will have, will have completely disappeared, et cetera, et cetera. It's going to be big changes in precipitation and, and so on. So I've done that. 
I'm not going to show you that. I've shown you the f f future climate. We don't do anything. The projection. So it's just a, a last example, for example, in, in terms of heat waves. In, in, in France, we had a massive heat waves in 2003, okay, just here. So this is the temperature as a function, uh, function of time. So in yellow is what has been observed, okay, the, the, the yellow dots from in the last century. And in 2003, exceptionally, we had a big heat wave and hundreds of people, even a I think thousands of people died in front, all elderly people. It was very, very hot, okay? And if you consider the future, which is the red, uh, the red dot here, temperature will be increasing. So it simply means that this exceptional uh, summer in 2003 will become normal in 2018 in, uh, in France. It will be a sort of normal summer. Normal summer will be, will be a sort of heat wave, heat wave summer. And, in, and it took, by 2100, this 2003, uh, su, uh, 2003 summer will become will will be will be, will be a, a cold summer. So that will have massive impact on what we call meteorological extreme, okay, heat waves, etc. And it will be also impact on droughts. And so I'm gonna I'm gonna see a range of impacts, and I'm, I'm finishing here. Okay, thank you.